All right. This is for James. I went through and dug through the shed and found the two carburetors for VW that I have. Uh, one's a 30 pick 2 and the other one's a 34 pick 3. I can't say exactly what the differences are on them because I'm not a super huge VW guy. Um, but realistically, uh, this has a solenoid on here. I know that much that uh, helps to shut off the fuel flow, uh, prevent like backfiring things. Uh, the reason why I recognize that is it's very similar to the ones that they use on lawnmowers. They're much smaller. Uh, standard electric carb or electric uh, choke on these. Uh, this is another solenoid or a sensor. Like I said, overall, I, I'm not an expert on those. The only things that I noticed really are those two big differences, and then this casting was changed at a later date to a like a metal or a. They added the casting either at a later date if the 34 is a later model, or they took the casting off and switched to a metal thing to save money or uh, simplify design uh, when they went to the 30 pick 2. Anyways, um, I don't know if this is going to end up being something that will really fit into a, just a 10 minute video to rebuild. I know I remember your comment said that it was you were looking at a pick 30 of some sort or a 32. So I'm going to probably tear this one apart just to show you what it looks like inside and if I were to rebuild this with having little to no knowledge of this carburetor, kind of what I would run through to do. Um, this is kind of going to combine experience from this carburetor, lawnmower carburetors, four barrel carburetors, two barrel carburetors, etc. Um, and even a little bit of throttle body stuff as well. That stuff's a lot simpler. Oh, actually I can... This is... Uh, Holly four barrel carb uh, for its a little little uh, shot that needs to be torn apart and redone. But that's the four barrel carb for the um, the other Corvair engine I've got. That one has the four pipe and a one intake manifold setup. But give me a second. Um, I'm gonna pause or stop this for a second, and then um, what I'm gonna do is pull. Let's see, this, 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 and this screw, and it looks like that will remove the top. Um, this here is probably a diaphragm. Uh, we'll take that off and see what's under there, and then I'll take this off and try to explain the choke. I'm not as uh, wordy with this kind of stuff um, as I could be, but this is kind of just more... Uh, experience from growing up so actually it's like a four to eight end tractor carburetors and all that other stuff too so um, same with a lot of the other guys out there one minute okay it took uh, all five screws out now let's see the spring probably would be better served off just because it's attached between the upper half and the lower half also I've got my camera set up real high so Seeing into there might be kind of hard. I might go out of frame every once in a while. I'll do my best. Um, so this, obviously, when I pulled it apart, it just split apart. Um, when you go to put it back together, you have to make sure that you bring these levers back or else it'll have problems. Uh, there is, it looks like a brass. It's either a locating ring, but it looks like it flows fuel through it, so it's probably a metering uh, port of some sort. But you can use that to help get your alignment, and you can also use that when you reassemble. The gasket stuck to the top in this case, but when you reassemble, I'm going to end up preventing the gasket pulling it off. But um, When you reassemble to go to put the gasket on, obviously throw it on there and it'll be easier to have it lined up by that. Okay, so top half. Uh, the fuel comes in through here. Obviously, you've got your your uh, float float needle here, and your float is down in here. That's this little gray thing that flops around. I'll try to explain that a little better in a second. Uh, let me tear off this side here, and we'll see what's under that, and then I will go through this. 
right, so there's a spring under there. I was right, it's a diaphragm. Uh, there is three screws there. You'll probably want to keep a thumb on there just so that it doesn't shoot the cover off when you get done taking all the screws out. Uh, let it lift off kind of slowly. Maybe you'll see the spring. Don't lose the spring. I'm just throwing things in a pile, but uh, an egg carton works really good for keeping things organized, for keeping track of things. Uh, and then here's the diaphragm. Let's see. It doesn't seem like it wants to slide out directly easily, so we'll take this apart first. It's probably attached to something within here. Alright, so I got the ring off. It's just three screws. This one has uh, some nylon spacers to help prevent over tightening. This is actually kind of spring loaded. Um, you can spin this to adjust the amount of tension or preload for the how when it, this opens or closes. Um, that's the, the choke butterfly. Let's see if this will come apart. Alright. So in here you kind of end up with a thermostat spring, which is kind of like what this is. Uh, and then there is a heater element that's wrapped in some ceramic in this particular one, right in there. So when you turn the ignition on in your car, it sends 12 volts to this. And this will start to heat that up, which will heat the coil. And then this will slowly, uh, I think... Okay, so in this model, it would go... Wait. Oh, okay, so it would be pulling that way. So it would hook on this side of the spring. This little nib here. This nib controls its attachment. Oh my goodness. What is locking that up? Why are you acting funny? Oh, that's probably what seems in the way. So I'll show you a butterfly in a second. So that's how that would work. This heats, and then this would rotate in this direction. Uh, the spring load from this side of the butterfly, this side of the butterfly, is what would um, put the preload against that spring. So yeah, there's the diaphragm here. It looks like it's probably uh, vacuum actuated, which would be with that little thing there. So the amount of air going through here creates vacuum, creates suction, and then this would pull that diaphragm on that spring like this, which would change how far this or when this can open. So uh, probably at uh, ignition or you know no start and crank, you would be fully closed. And then what happens is uh, once the engine starts idling and starts drawing a vacuum, this would pull back, or the diaphragm would basically pull this back as far as however... Ah, everything's locked up on this thing. Oh, don't put your pinky on the other end of the diaphragm, or the other side of the butterfly. This would pull back, which would force... It's so under vacuum, this would pull back against that spring. And then that would force the butterfly. This is really hard to hold an angle. This would pull back and open that up and force that open a certain amount, which would help it uh, still choke at idle, but it would start to um, get a better leaner mixture. So it would warm up faster, among other things. Now as far as getting that out, once you take that the uh, heat shieldy thing out, that just kind of slides out. And then just make sure that when you go to reassemble, you push that all the way forward first. And then this side, there's not too much to go on. Um, this little lever here is what actually moves the butterfly. And then this is kind of like a, a graduated lever. And so this would be under uh, this pin here would ratchet against these and depending on how far that is that's what allows the butterfly to open or close further uh, I'm not sure if that's spring based or if one of those levers is what controls that I didn't notice when I took it apart so I'd have to
have to figure that out as I went back together. Now, if I were to be cleaning things, I would take card cleaner. Uh, I need a pick. So, you have your brass tube here. I would probably either check this, don't like just jam like a pick in here because you can deform that orifice and it'll change the amount of fuel it flows. So, normally it looks like fuel would flow in through this passage and it would come out through this one. So, you would stick carb cleaner in through here and make sure it comes out here. Watch your eyes. You have no clue how many times I've eaten or went blind from carb cleaner for a few minutes. Uh, same with brake cleaner, so really, like goggles and stuff. Um, but yeah, do that. Uh, if this looks like it's corroded up or plugged, a uh, trick my grandpa taught me is to get some, it's, uh, he's, he had a couple different gauges of like a really, really fine guitar wire, stuff like that. You want to use something that's not super, super hard in terms of a, a metal because this is brass. So like anything that you really push in there with any amount of force is going to cause a little bit of a change to that brass. Uh, and the more that you do that, the more that the fuel flow c becomes inconsistent from the spec that it's supposed to be at. Uh, this one here, this tube, you just want to make sure it's clear. It's a fairly large tube. That's just a vent tube though. It, uh, vents atmosphere instead of vacuum to the float bowl uh, and then if I were to clean any other ones I'd maybe throw some carb cleaner through here to make sure it comes out here uh, that should be just a vacuum port by the location yeah on the front end of this carb it would be a vacuum uh, let's see this one isn't super important for this butterfly. Um, it can become a little problematic, but I'll explain things to check on the butterfly shaft on the other butterfly, the actual um, one down there. And this should be like a, it's hard to read because it's painted on, but that would be like the serial number of this carburetor. Some of them will have it, some of them have been lost to time. You can use that to look up like more specific details. Uh, production stuff. I'll grab a socket and I'll pull that off. Alright, so it uses a 14 millimeter socket for this one. And really the only thing on this, because if you buy a rebuild kit, you should end up probably... One of the better rebuild kits that you would buy should come with a replacement one of these. Um, make sure this is clear. No varnish from old fuel, stuff like that. Uh, don't lose this copper gasket or any rebuild kit should come with one if it comes with one of these uh, If it doesn't come with one of these uh, basically this thing has to move and it, If you spray carb cleaner in through this hole, it should come out these two when this is pointing down so when it should come out these two holes if you spray carb cleaner in through this one and this thing that moves, it should hang down when you spray in, and it should come out. If you flip it over, or if you put your finger on top of it lightly, and then spray through there, it should not come through there, because this is essentially a valve, um, like a pin valve. One second. All right, the next one to do would be the float, since that's related to the uh, float needle. There's a little plastic spacer that holds the top once you put the, the lid on that holds down against these two pins and prevents this from pivoting and floating in the wrong location because you want it to function basically on a, a fairly solid hinge um, some carburetors use different styles of pinning for this if it is a style that's the cast metal and there's two posts that come up with a hole that runs through and then the pin would pass through the post and then this and then the post 
uh, be very careful if the pin doesn't want to come out because it's very easy to over torque those posts and break a post off and if you break the post off the casting since a lot of these are kind of like a pot metal you're not going to be able to make them like you're not going to be able to get them welded back together um, I have a old scooter carburetor that had the intake shaft break off and yeah there's just not really any good way to fix that right now I'm going to have to figure out how to machine a, a new port for a sonnet. Uh, this thing here is a jet. You can just unscrew that. Be careful because this is made of brass. Uh, and if like it's already been over torqued a few times, see how the, the faces are starting to smoosh out. That's bad. If you do do that too much, it'll actually shear that entire face off and then you have a whole nother type of problem with trying to get that out. Uh, the best thing you can do is find a screwdriver with a very large broad head on it like even this this is too wiggly so let me see if i got something better this might work. so this one's one i've cut down or ground down already to kind of make it a little broader and if you stick that on there you get a little better control on that screw and take it out. And so this is an emulsion tube jet. So you want to make sure that this opening here is clear. This carburetor, aside from having some varnish in the bottom, is actually fairly clean for the condition it's in. Uh, make sure that all these ports are cleared. And some of these will be open on the end, some might not be. Uh, Depends on if this ends open or not. Uh, let me see. Clear it with carb cleaner. Make sure that all these are open. Uh, if you've got air compressor, blow air through that. Another thing to watch out for is not all of these will be drilled evenly or, or equally. So like there's one hiding up here. Sometimes there will be a really tiny one on the opposite side or on the a weird adjacent side and it'll just be in like this weird location I might have something from like a DCOE carb that would explain that really well because they have some pretty odd emulsion tubes um, this here is a vacuum port it just blow carb cleaner through here should come out uh, this tube right there it's really hard to see it's uh, it's this tube right down here that comes out underneath the this uh, venturi and then this I believe should come out but I don't remember if it's a press or if it's a screw style oh, press okay so this is kind of like a slip, ro or slip ring type thing. And so when this goes in, you'll want to make sure that this flat side is facing towards the edge of this wall. Otherwise, you won't be able to get your lid to sit back on it. And what you'll want to do is basically hold that in place and swing this out to wherever you want it to be. I'm not sure what your, it's actually supposed to be on here. Uh, let's see. Okay, so it looks like it should be coming out. Uh, let's see. So if you see, so you got your venturi that comes out towards the very center, and then you've got the uh, wall right there. I would probably set it up to be roughly halfway in between the two. And then take like a screwdriver or something like that and just kind of give it a couple taps, and that should press that, that slip ring back in there. There's probably a spec manual on it but if you tap both sides a couple times it should be good enough um, let's see spray carb cleaner through there make sure it comes out should come out there and it will probably also come out down here um, see that is just a drain port so if you were storing your car for the winter you could drain the gas out of the, the float bowl tank so it doesn't varnish like this um, you won't be able to get it all out which is probably why that's varnished like that let's see 
Okay, so if you spray carb cleaner through this port, it should come out through the hole in the wall right there. And you can tell that because pretty much anything that's drilled into a casting has to at least start in a straight, one direction straight. So you see it goes in through here, it would come down through this leg, and then as part of the operation, this arm wouldn't be here, but you have to be able to drill a hole through here, but you don't want to put a hole in the opposite side of your, you know, basically your bathtub. So they drill another hole where that little cap is. It would come in through there and come out this side. And then they just press this little little cap thing into the end of there. So instead of messing with that cap, because it's something that pressed in, you might be able to get replacements. They might come with them. But spray in through here, and if it comes out here, you should be pretty good. Uh, if it's particularly bad, then you may end up having to try to get that plug out and actually clear it. And that's not fun. I've had to do that before. Uh, as far as other easy to do things in one shot, that one won't fit. Actually, so this is going to be a, it's probably the, the idle jet adjustment. Either that or vacuum flow adjustment. But um, on your carburetor, if it's already been tuned for your engine, uh, before you take it out, turn it in, um, counting how many turns until it seats, but don't over torque it, so go lightly. Um, so like in this one, that's a half a turn. That's one turn. So I'd say about one and an eighth of a turn. So remember that or write it down so that when you reassemble it, you can put it back to that setting. Uh, you'll have a much easier time getting your car started and idling again before you tune it back in because you will probably have to oops, you will probably have to make a few adjustments to the carburetor after doing a, a rebuild. Um, make sure so this is the needle end of the the screw. Make sure that this edge right here, you can see where there's kind of a shinier spot. That's where it's rubbed the most when seated. So you want to make sure that that's not deformed too much. It's not like a, a, a crater in there. And then there's not a whole lot you can do to really look down in there other than get a flashlight and try to make sure that the or, you know opening looks good. Spray carb cleaner through there. Uh, it should come out... I'm thinking it's going to come out a few of these holes up in here. Um, I'm not sure which ones. There's a lot of these cross-drilled passages in this. So. Uh, I don't have any cans of carb cleaner laying right nearby. Others I'd try it. Um, some of them will come with new screws. Some of them will come with new springs. Uh, just depends on the kit. Let's see. So, yep, that's a, some type of metering valve that's on a diaph or a solenoid. So I would probably spray some carb cleaner in through that orifice at the very end there and make sure it comes out the four holes around there. Uh, if your model has this, it may not. Uh, the other thing you could do, since it's stamped 12 volts on there, you can take this out and test it by... Uh, grounding this side and touching a 12 volt connection like from a car battery on here and if it clicks it should work um, and it, one way or the other on or off with the 12 volts spraying in one end should prevent it from coming out the other because uh, it's basically supposed to be another on off valve um, spray carb cleaner in through that opening there and make sure uh, it looks like it probably meets up into there based on where it's drilled. Uh, uh, uh. Looks like I just got the accelerator pump left. Um, so yeah, this here, hang on. Okay, this is another one that's got a spring under it, so hold it down as you take the screws out. Um, and then, uh, let's see. Probably would have been better to have taken this out first or this end first off. Actually, it might just be able to come off now because it's so far apart. Yep, cool. 
So if you've got it that far apart, it looks like you can just kind of spin that around and it'll pop out. Either that or there's supposed to be a clip of this on the other side and it's just not there right now. But take that off. Uh, this side should be fairly clean. Uh, there's, it's open to the, the air through that port there. So, um, this, however, is no good. Um, this should be kind of a flexible rubber, and and this is the most common problem on old carbs if they've been at all half taken well care of. Uh, and I've seen a lot of guys do old engine starts and stuff without doing carb rebuilds, and that's generally how they kind of get them up and going. Um, and that they, they say as such uh, that as long as you don't hammer on the gas, you're not trying to get into the, the accelerator pump that's, you know, shot, um, you can kind of get them around, but you got to baby them. Because without the accelerator pump, if you try to accelerate it will uh, cause the engine to go lean and burn it up a little bit every time you do it or burn it up really quick. Uh, spring, remember the order, spring and order of positioning. Uh, this one looks like it's got this on top and the spring goes underneath and then the top will go on and press down to screw it together. Uh, make sure this is, this would normally have fuel in it, this whole area, so Make sure all that stuff's cleaned out. Uh, you want to make sure this port and this port is clean. Oops. This port and this port are clean. And clean out any of the, the gunk because this whole area will be full of fuel. Um, and then spray. Let's see. Oh, it's got crud down in there, so I'm not sure if that's a port or if that's a valve. Some carburetors on the accelerator pumps will have a little check valve ball in here somewhere usually underneath uh, something that kind of looks like this, or uh, let's see, where did the original little jet go? See, I throw everything in little piles because the way it works in my head is once I take it apart, I know how to put it back together because it's like a VHS tape. But I have too much crap laying all over right now, and now I can't even find where half of the things went. Even still, uh, it would look like the thing that was was here. Um, but that's about it. Other than that, you'd want to kind of you know do your best to clean all this stuff out. There's different ways to handle that, particularly bag carburetors. Uh, it's better to soak them. Is that a screw? Hmm. It's threaded like a, there's a screw there, but. There's no screw head, so that must have been a something that blocks the port off there, and then it becomes permanent. Oh, and then the one other thing, like I was talking about on this, this is the lower butterfly. That's what and then when that actually controls how much air goes through the engine and mixes fuel and all that. Um, this thing, over the years, depending on how many miles the carburetor has had on it and the use and stuff like that, um, this butterfly shaft will wear on this inner surface here on that and it can do it on both sides it can do it on one side it might only do it at a certain position it might be worn it's, it, it can be a pain trust me i have fought with those things a number of times so the best thing that you can do with that is if you suspect that uh, I don't know of a good diagnostic, like when you're in this situation, besides taking it all apart and, and doing the measurements and stuff. But when it's on the car and you've got it running, once you've got everything else all good, uh, so you know you got no vacuum leaks and stuff like that, if you spray, um, some people use WD-40, some people use brake cleaner, some people use carb cleaner, uh, some people use ether. I generally use whatever I have on hand that I know kind of will burn, but also that's not really a safe thing to do, spraying it onto a running engine, so tread lightly. Uh, but if you spray it right around this area here and then right into this area here, as long as you have no other vacuum leaks or anything else to suck that in, if there is a vacuum leak coming in because of because of where in the shaft. Stop it. 
because of wear in the shaft, um, you would probably have to take this apart, which you take these two screws out. Uh, some of these will be pinned on the back side, uh, like these are. They've been punched. Maybe you'll see it better on this. And there, see how they've, there's a cross on there. That means they've been punched, so they won't really back out or come apart easily. Uh, you may have to grind that out somehow, or you might have to have uh, somebody um, more experienced take care of it if you're not too sure on how to do that. If you try to force those screws out that are, are done like that, you'll generally uh, mess up the threads that's in this butterfly shaft, and then you'll have to replace it. Ask me how I know. Um, once you get those screws out, this is kind of like a little cookie in a slot. It just slides out. Remember the side that the hole was on? This one also has, it looks like a slight uh, cut or a relief in this side of the butterfly and that goes through both sides which means it's part of the air metering system as well so you'll want to make sure that you face that on the right side of the the shaft as well when you reassemble it um, other way let's see taking you have to take these all take that all off but once you get that shaft you can slide the shaft out uh, and there's a thing that you can do called reaming, so you get a specific size drill bit. Uh, they're kind of shaped different from a standard drill bit. Uh, I'd probably have a machine shop do it if you don't have the right equipment to fixture it or the experience to do it um, in one go, because you only kind of get one go with that. Uh, or you have to go to the next size up, and that's even worse. But you would ream that a little bit larger and they have a thing that's called like a bushing it's just a slightly larger or sl it's like a tube essentially that it makes the right size to what this should be when it was new or close to new uh, and you just press that in on each side uh, and then that would fix the the vacuum leak coming in through that stuff I know. And that's about it for the most part I can think of. Oh, there's a port right there. That is not a 14. Don't judge me. So... There's a, oh, my screwdriver's too bad. Oh, this one might be too small. Let's see. So there is a port down here that's metering as well that I almost missed. Which is why it's good to always make a couple, one or two last once overs before you. So that looks like it's the main jet. It's a larger size uh, based on the size of the hole there. And then if you have really good eyes or a camera that you can take a really good high resolution picture and zoom in on, uh, you can read the jet sizing for here. Uh, it's helpful if you need to change it. See, this one has a uh, looks like a X116 for it on it, but that so you want to make sure that there's that passage there. Once that comes out, that's clear and clean, uh, and that should come up through this port passage right here and out right there. You should also dump out this and. I don't know if you can really see that very well, even in the light, but that basically is just like a cone right there, almost like the, a rocket nozzle. And so when the fuel comes up there and out there, because of that effect, I think it's like the, I want to say it's the coronoida, or coronoida, I can't pronounce that word, effect, 
but if it um, basically the water follows the, the the walls of the cone and brings it out to the ring and that helps the fuel that um, what do you call it vaporize more effectively or not atomize yeah atomizes more effectively into the the air and Uh, that, that's so that port right there is a brass insert and I can see threads on it so there is possible a very small screw down on the end of this that is too dirty for me to see right now that you might have to take out and there might be a ball in there uh, let's see yeah there's a ball in there I can hear it okay there you go so yeah, there's a there's a small ball in there. In this case, it's rattling, so it probably is working. But you can check that um, fuel should only flow in in that check valve, I believe, for that style. So, which means that uh, spraying in this way on that side should not work. There, basically, if you spray carb cleaner and you get a good seal around this opening right here it should not come back out this side or only a small jet of it will come out and then it'll stop. Um, and that means that that ball's working. Um, you may have to get a manual to double check. Like I said, I'm not, I haven't used or rebuilt one of these ones specifically. This is just kind of like if I were to do it or somebody asked me to rebuild any carburetor, this is my general diagnostic process. Uh, any any of these types of things, ports like that, anything that looks brass or you know gold in color compared to the silver casting, is something that's either been pressed in, which means it won't come out, uh, or it's something that should have a thread somewhere that's visible, so like the threading in right there, uh, or something like that, in one of the two things. And then, like in this one, it's the main jet again. Um, it should have some kind of a... Some of them will have Phillips, but most of them will be flathead and carburetors. And they're all square cut. Uh, there you go. They're, they're square cut. They're not... I don't know what the exact term is for it. But a lot of, a lot of screws, at least on like a metric type carburetors, older metric carburetors, all these... These are square cut style, so the flatter ground end that you can get and less taper on the sides for the screwdriver, the better bite you can get on the screw without potentially causing damage. Uh, let's see. I don't really see anything else here that really I would go through. Um, I would take a look at your rebuild kit for whatever comes in it and kind of take stock of that before you tear the carburetor apart. And as you tear the carburetor apart, look for things that match and kind of set those in an order along the line. So like as you're disassembling the carburetor and you find a part that you have in your kit that you want to replace, set it there, there, and then as you come across the next thing, set it there. And that kind of creates a, a timeline of parts. And then all you have to do is as you go to reassemble, go backwards, reassembling from the opposite end of the line, but using the new parts as you go. And as you put a new part in, take a part off the timeline and throw it away. And then by the time you're done, you kind of end up going in the opposite direction, you'll, you'll have it all back together. Um, the only other thing of note is this carburetor has a plastic style float, so it's not too terribly easy to mess up the float adjustment. Other carburetors, uh, I don't know if I have one that's open right
So this is a replacement float for uh, the old, uh, the original carburetor for the the uh, turbo Corvair engine. This is an upgraded model. It's uh, like a plastic so that they're less likely to leak or um, degrade. The older style ones will be more brass uh, in type. And if these are hollow and like this is a, like a hollow plastic and you can kind of see through it. So if there's fuel in there, you can see. But if fuel ends up in these, they, they create a leak and they get fuel in them. Then they start to sink kind of like a boat would. And then it just makes it worse because it just allows more fuel to keep dumping and dumping in there. It, it, it's not The valve isn't working properly. Um, this style is more of like a foam plastic, so it's actually all solid. These can eventually, over time, if they have that foam matrix in there, they can absorb fuel and start to sink, but they're much less likely to. Uh, the brass ones I have dealt with and fought with and had lots of fun destroying and trying to fix. Um, those ones are easy, you're most easily tested. Uh, if you shake them, usually if they're leaking, you can already hear something in there sloshing around. Um, if not, you can boil test them, which is you boil, you know, a cup of water and then you dunk the brass thing inside of it all the way down. Uh, use some players because it's boiling water. Or not boiling, but quite hot water. And then, if you when you dunk it down into the cup of water, all the way under the water, if you see bubbles coming up, because the heat from the water is going to cause the air inside the uh, float to expand, it'll push air out and bubble. Uh, then you know it's leaking. Uh, and in those cases, if you're particularly handy with a soldering iron or a uh, light duty blowtorch, you can repair those. But you have to be careful because the more uh, solder or lead that you put on there, um, the heavier the float becomes. And then you have to compensate for that adjustment. And that takes it out of spec even from the repair manuals. And then you have an even harder time because you have to define your own spec for your oddly weighted float. Um, these can be warped out of place as well. This is a brand new one, so it's not going to be. But... Uh, like I said before, that pin that it pivots on, that actually fits. We'll go with that. So that pin pivots on a post kind of thing like that. Uh, some of these, if people or in, t in the past or if it was just poorly designed, poorly manufactured, some of them are just not stamped right coming or fully stamped right from the factory even. But when these are rolled over to create the hinge, these should be still fairly tight. This shouldn't be able to wobble a whole lot back and forth that way. And if you were to look at it from this angle, it should not be able to wobble like this a whole lot. The only thing it should be able to do is go like this. Because any of this that's too far out of spec, I mean, a little bit needs to be there because it's it's going to move. But if it's too too far out, it'll cause it to hit the needle on the float in a funky angle. And sometimes it will cause that needle, depending on the needle design, not to seal properly and until it next goes down and tries to seal or it vibrates enough to cause it to to hit it right and seal uh, the easiest thing to do too is to take the pin that you're actually using put that through and take a really small pair of pliers and actually squeeze and roll that forward like that and that will help pull that roll from that hinge back around that and tighten it down. Do that on both sides with with the pin from the hinge in there and that should be more than adequate because remember there's also a post on either side that it slips through as well so it has lots of places that it has to, to move. Um, that's just a tip from my experience having issues with certain types of carburetors and their floats and trying to, to improve operation. Uh, especially on lawnmower carburetors where the stampings and, and some of that stuff are uh, not quite as, as like automotive grade or um, cases where older lawnmowers with the old brass floats where they're rolled over at the hinges like that 
they just, from the vibration and stress over time, they just kind of open up a little bit, give them a little tweak, and they're, they're good back and, and good to go in that regard. Uh, the rest of that for float level adjustment, uh, I would need a normal carburetor that requires this style float with the metal tab to adjust to be able to describe that better. But since you're using this PIC-30, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to worry about going into depth that far with this style carburetor. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's what I got for you, James. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know, and I will try to run through any of it that I can for you to help you out. Thanks. Bye. Oh, yeah. Love you. Bye.